Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. This is a Bitcoin chart from Bitstamp and you can see the mini flash crash we had. You can see that the Mt. Gox price is 566 while we're trading at 708. Big reversal, Mt. Gox is traditionally traded nearly $100 over the other exchanges. That has now changed. Before I get into this big story, I want to give a historical lesson here. This is my Bitcoin report from back in June 19th, 2011. So more than two and a half years ago, just so you can see that this is not a new thing. Let's watch a little bit of this here. One cent. That's right, people one cent now we're back up to a dollar so this appears is that two dollars and one dollar I wish my charting software was working but it doesn't seem to be working at all the bad ticks are just coming like crazy it looks like a complete washout now I haven't studied before to see if Mt. Gox has the has a buy limit orders uh, lock book buy sell limit orders so now we're getting thirteen dollars this, this looks like a flash crash so I don't know what's going on at Mt. Gox this is just craziness okay our 10 minutes shows us nothing it looks like our data has completely crashed let me we're back up to 14 it looks like we may have had a uh, flash crash on Mt. Gox let me kill the feed and restart it. And I'm not seeing any historical data come in. There we go. 14. Hmm. It's looking like a flash crash, people. Really bizarre. Let me see if I can get into Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox shows the crash. <laughs> Negative 1.8. That's great. So I guess you owe them money. <laughs> Fantastic. I am. We're back to $14. This is crazy. I may end up pulling my bitcoins off of here. Uh, my my 6.16 bitcoins. We may be uh, looking at some kind of scam going on. It may not have to do with Bitcoins. It may actually have to do with the Mt. Gox site. So you can see our flash crash in Bitcoins. It looks like we went to one cent. So I hope nobody had any limit orders on Mt. Gox. Because if you do, they just took all your coins. And that ought to tell you about trading with limit orders and stops because the way that works is that in a flash crash, and that happened in the May flash crash in the stock market, there were stocks that flashed to a penny and flashed back up. And, of course, that's never been sufficiently investigated. So this is an ongoing one, people. I may have to cover this again tonight. But we had a flash crash to one penny on Mt. Gox in the Bitcoin. We're back up now to 15 and this is craziness but I will let you know when I find out. Talk to you next time. Okay so that was the video there and my initial guesstimate was that it was a flash crash. Now we all know that it turns out that Mt. Gox was hacked. Now it's going to be my suspicion that something similar occurred just recently. As you know, we had a sort of flash crash. It wasn't nearly as much on Gox as it actually, you can see that $500, $499, $500 low price. Actually, BTCE shows a flash crash down to 102. I don't think that trades actually occurred at those prices. But we can see on Bitstamp that 
the price is actually higher right now than the beginning of that flash crash. You can see there was actually an initial breakout here and that was fairly significant right before the Mt. Gox issue occurred. So what's going on? Well I've suspected for some time that Mt. Gox is possibly got hacked in the past and that what had happened is that they probably lost a lot of coins because of poor security and if you're running any kind of exchange you can see at this point now in the video that I did back in 2011 when the original flash crash occurred there was Mt. Gox and Trade Hill <laughs> And of course I went and checked Trade Hill and it was not really trading that much. But now it's a whole different scenario. You can see here's a list of cryptocurrency exchanges. And you can see the name of the exchange, the total volume of the exchange, and the trading pairs on the exchange. Now it's interesting that they've delisted Mt. Gox here. Gox is not listed at all. And I've covered the graphical exchange comparison before. And in the past, Gox was down here at third. But now you can see that we've got OKCoin, and that's the big Chinese exchange. And Litecoin is actually trading more volume than Bitcoin, actually twice. So Litecoin is a big, big thing in China. And again, this is quoted in Bitcoin volume, not in Litecoin volume. So you can see there's 154,000 Bitcoin volume in Litecoin, whereas there's 75,000 volume Bitcoin CNY. So Litecoin in China is twice as popular as Bitcoin. Anyway, this is the big daddy of them all. You can actually fit all of the other exchanges inside of the Chinese exchange, and it just has two trading pairs. Second comes in with Bitstamp, and we've got Bitfinex. It looks like they trade uh, Litecoin US dollar and uh, Litecoin Bitcoin. Next one is going to be BTCE. That's the one we had the flash crash on. They have quite a, a larger selection, you can see. And then we have BTC China and BTER and Cripsy. Very interesting that BTER is larger than Cripsy. I wouldn't have expected that, but it's significantly larger. And the big coin on a BTER is actually a Doge, which is incredible. So a lot of diversification, a lot of changes going on, and you can see that Mt. Gox really isn't missed. So let's delve into this Mt. Gox story. Now, I'm going to look at a few stories here from Coindesk. Uh, this first one here, Gavin Andreessen and Jeff Garzik, Mt. Gox is wrong. Bitcoin isn't broken. Bitcoin Core developers Jeff Garzik and Gavin Andreessen have responded to Mt. Gox's claims that there is a flaw in Bitcoin software. Mt. Gox issued a statement this morning revealing it had suspended Bitcoin withdrawals indefinitely due to a previously known technical issue with its custom wallet implementation. Okay, keep that in mind here. It's not a flaw with Bitcoin. It's a flaw with their custom wallet implementation of the Bitcoin Core protocol. Garz stressed that Mt. Gox seems to be attempting to shift the blame for its recent failings onto Bitcoin and its developers. Quote, first and foremost, Bitcoin is not broken. There is no fundamental flaw in Bitcoin, said Garzik. He went on to explain that Mt. Gox's issue is with a technical detail called transaction malleability, which has been known about since 2011 and even has its own wiki entry. The Linux kernel engineer highlighted this point in another tweet this afternoon. Garzik told Coindesk there are certain security practices that sites like Mt. Gox need to follow 
Most notably, customer support staff and related software must not assume that transaction IDs are unchangeable prior to being confirmed in the blockchain. Now think about that. If you are running an exchange, are you going to allow deposits or withdrawals of Bitcoins to be finalized before they're confirmed in the blockchain? That's absolutely insane. Quote, confirmation in the blockchain is Bitcoin's core security mechanism. He said it is unlikely that this issue will cause any emergency updates to be made to the core Bitcoin software, but it could lead to some websites such as Mt. Gox updating their versions of the software. Garzik commented that it is difficult to make software that people can use and adjust without making errors. Quote, programmers are not immune to missing documented details and new systems are not immune to rough edges but we're always on the lookout for ways to remove the sharp edges that people cut themselves on he concluded Gavin Andreessen lead developer on the Bitcoin project confirmed in a statement on the Bitcoin foundation's blog that the core development team has been working to limit transaction malleability there quote there is broad agreement in the community that this needs to be eliminated finding the best and most responsible solution will take time in the meantime users of the reference implementation do not need to be concerned transactions are always tracked properly by the Bitcoin QT software he explained and Dreesen concluded that the foundation is committed to working with companies within the Bitcoin ecosystem to produce the best practice documents to help improve the main Bitcoin software so there there's one article now here's another article Coindesk removes Mt. Gox from Bitcoin price index Coindesk has removed Mt. Gox from the Bitcoin price index today due to its persistent failure to meet index standards for inclusion Ultimately, the decision to remove Mt. Gox from the BPI was prompted by Friday's announcement that Bitcoin withdrawals had been suspended until Monday and today's follow-up announcement that Bitcoin withdrawals would now be suspended indefinitely. This was due to a previously known technical issue with Mt. Gox's custom wallet implementation of the Bitcoin Core protocol. However, these recent withdrawal restrictions are just the latest in a series of issues that have made Mt. Gox's inclusion in the BPI problematic. A concern separate from timely customer withdrawals, which had recently commanded attention, was the expansion of the so-called Mt. Gox premium. For example, on the 28th of January, Mt. Gox customers were paying more than 25% more for bitcoins than customers on BTC-E and another BPI component exchange. The issue of price dispersion across the many different bitcoin exchanges was part of Coindesk's original rationale behind the bitcoin price index and some ongoing dispersion is to be expected for reasons ranging from differences in bitcoin regulation across the globe to the overall maturity of the exchange market for bitcoins. However, the price dispersion between two other BPI components, Bitstamp and BTCE, has recently remained in the low single-digit price range, raising concerns over whether Bitcoin prices quoted on Gox were representative of the overall market. Concerns over excessive price dispersion at Mt. Gox, however, have since subsided as the Gox premium compressed into single percentage digits the 28th of January's, uh, January, and it, it goes on. And the last article here on Coindesk is Community Outrage Marks Latest Chapter in Mt. Gox Story. Following Mt. Gox's decision to abruptly suspend all Bitcoin withdrawals. Now think about that people. You need to think about that very carefully. You always can withdraw your Bitcoins. You can always deposit your Bitcoins and you can always withdraw your Bitcoins. That's the key to Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrencies. I personally have an account on Cripsy right now. Have a big uh, position in a lot of alts, Grand Coin and, and Alpha Coin and a lot of those other coins. Have got the wallets, have transferred the coins off of the exchange 
into the wallets, back onto the exchange, very low transaction costs, very low transaction times. If you can't get your crypto coins off the exchange, there's a problem on that exchange, and that's what we're seeing with Mt. Gox. On February 7th, many industry commentators and and observers, Coindesk included, began to feel the writing was on the wall for the Bitcoin's first and once largest exchange. But despite the results of our extensive reader survey and critiques from industry heavyweights like Andreas Antonopoulos, there were those who maintained that given its industry reputation, the company's critics may have been premature in their statements. However, Mt. Gox's future may be even more uncertain after controversial statements issued Monday further damaged the company's reputation and industry standing. The comments which blamed inherent problems with the Bitcoin protocol for the withdrawal delays ignited a veritable firestorm of anger on message boards much of which was directed at Mt. Gox CEO Mark Karpalis. Karpalis' critics alleged he failed to take responsibility for exchanges' technical failures and management limitations. A swift rebuke from other industry thought leaders soon followed, with many saying that Mt. Gox was being deceptive by blaming previously known issues for its delays. In Reddit posts, some community members even went so far as to call for Carpella's resignation from the Bitcoin Foundation. I agree, Carpella's should resign from the Bitcoin Foundation, of which he is a board member. At press time, the Bitcoin Foundation has not responded to requests for clarification regarding Carpella's standing within the organization. Regardless, some industry observers believe that the intent of the statements may not matter, etc. So... Back to the charts, the key is that I've maintained from the beginning that the market will out. Markets, especially free markets like Bitcoin markets, you have to remember the problems with Mt. Gox aren't necessarily all the fault of Mt. Gox because being the first Bitcoin exchange, they were the first ones to feel the heat and the brunt of the US regulators and the FinCEN requirements all the problems in regards to that but at the same time I covered on my video the fact that Mt. Gox was hacked if you remember at the time everybody was saying it's the end of the world all the shills and trolls were out there telling us that Bitcoin had been compromised when in fact Bitcoin had not been compromised at all it was the Mt. Gox exchange that had been compromised. It appears again that the Mt. Gox exchange has been compromised. It has not recovered its price, whereas the other exchanges have recovered their price. You can see the dramatic difference between Mt. Gox and these other exchanges on these same time frames. Here's the Chinese exchange. So what does that tell us? It tells us that Bitcoin is not an exchange. Bitcoin is secure. Bitcoin is safe. Bitcoin to this day has been invulnerable. Now, I don't believe that it is a certainty that Bitcoin will always be invulnerable to certain attacks. It certainly has been to this time. That's why I disagree with people who don't like altcoins. I like altcoins because altcoins are just the same idea in another place and that means safety in diversification so I believe it's my personal opinion this it doesn't have anything to do with news or anything else it's just my personal opinion that I believe that at some point in the past because of their lax security Mt. Gox was probably hacked and lost a significant percentage of their coins. They probably decided at that point in time to take a gamble and take advantage of their premium to the other exchanges and to try to make that back with transaction premiums. For some reason, and I don't know what that would be, but that strategy, in my opinion, failed and it's now become fairly clear that Mt. Gox is unable to make good on the Bitcoin withdrawals and therefore they have frozen Bitcoin withdrawals. So my guess is we will continue to see 
the Gox price diverge from the other exchanges and uh, that's the Chinese exchange here's Gox here's BTCE and here's Bitstamp so this is not any flaw in Bitcoin this is a flaw in an exchange in the implementation of that exchange we saw hints at that more than two years ago when I covered the first Bitcoin crash on Mt. Gox but fortunately now two and three quarters years later we have a lot of other exchanges out there and now Mt. Gox can go away and it really wouldn't affect Bitcoin and we'll talk to you next time.